Hello? Hi, it's Eddie there. Speaking? Hi, this is Jess. Hi, how you doing? Good, Eddie. How you doing? Oh, Neil Slozauer told me you wanted me to call you. Yeah, we wanted to write a story about uh, the Diver, Di Diver Down album. Uh-huh. And wanted to interview you about the different cuts. Oh, sure. Uh, is this a good time? Not right now. i got to leave in like five minutes, and uh, I think you're going to need a little more time than that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, how about if I call you at home after the show? Uh, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm at, uh, let me give you my number. Yeah, hold on, let me find the pen. Okay, go ahead. Uh, 408. Yeah. 257. 257. Okay, I'll, what? I'll call you probably around, um, 10 or 11 your time. Hey, thanks, Eddie. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right, how you doing? All right, I, uh, I, I, uh, I stayed up, like, till about 10 o'clock in the morning driving on the bus. It was a longer drive than I thought. Uh-huh. So I just stayed up playing guitar, all of a sudden it started getting light. We got here about 9 o'clock in the morning, and I couldn't get to sleep till like 10, and I slept all day and forgot to call you. Hey, no big deal. Did you play tonight? Yeah, yeah, I just walked in the door. What city are you in? Uh, God damn it. Cincy? Um, <laughs> Lowellville, Kentucky. Lowellville, Kentucky. Well, it's... They get pissed when you say Louisville. It's Louisville. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm not interrupting anything? No, not at all. Okay. You up for a few questions? Sure. What, what time is it there? Uh, it must be about 9.15. Oh, okay. Yeah, we wanted to write a story about the Diver uh, Down album. Mm-hmm. And uh, talk about, maybe have you talk about each cut a little bit. Uh, yeah. Sure, fine. As you, did you write most of the music? Uh, well, there's like, actually, like half cover tunes and half our own. Yeah. You know, you know, and the fucking critics have been giving a shit about that. But, uh, I think it's a bunch of crap, you know? Yeah. You know I mean, like, say, Dancing in the Streets, Pretty Woman, uh, Where Have All the Good Times Gone, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's not like the original. Uh-huh. You know, and whenever you, whenever you do a cover tune... Like, say, in our second album, when we did uh, You're No Good, uh, whenever you redo a cover tune, I don't think you should do it like the original. Uh-huh. And I don't think any cover tune we've ever done has been like the original, you know? Yeah. And uh, it, it takes almost as much time to make a cover tune sound original as it does writing a song. Uh-huh. You know? <clears throat> yeah. So fuck the critics. Is what right on. <laughs> this no, it just pisses me off, you know, because uh, I spend a lot of time, you know, arranging and, uh, you know, playing synthesizer and shit on Dancing in the Streets, and they just kind of write it off like, oh, you know, it doesn't, uh, it's just like the original, but that's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. There's such a wide range of music for the on the album. How much did you uh, toss? I should say that again. There's there's such a wide range of songs. How many did you record when you went to record it? Oh, uh, uh, let me see. I think we did a couple of extra ones. One of them's called Big Trouble, uh -huh. and another one uh, was called. Well, it actually had no title, but used to be called House of Pain. <laughs> House of Pain? <laughs> yeah, so don't, 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 don't even mention that. Uh-huh. You know, but it, it, it was a good riff. It's just, you know, we didn't have... It, what we plan on doing this year, or, you know, last year when we came off the Fair Warning Tour, we were going to take some time off. Uh-huh. You know, and, and spend a lot of time uh, writing and this and that. And, uh... We, uh, Dave came up with the idea of, hey, why don't we start off the new year with just putting out a single? And Dave wanted to do Dancing in the Streets. Uh -huh. And he gave me the original Martha Reeves and the Vandellas tape, and I listened to it, and I'm going, fuck, I can't, get, I can't get a handle on anything out of this song. You know, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't figure out a riff or... You know, you know the way I play. I always like to do a riff as opposed to just hitting bar chords and strumming. Yeah. So 
I, I said, hey, look, if you want to do a cover tune, why don't we do Pretty Woman? And we, we it took one day. We went to Sunset Sound, recorded it, and uh, it came out like you know early, you know, right after the first of the year. Yeah. And uh, it, it started. Her brothers just going, hey, fuck, man, you got a hit single on your hands, man. We need that album. We got to have that record. And we're going, wait a minute, you know. We just did that to keep people, uh, to keep us out there uh -huh. so people know we're still alive. But they, they, you know, they just kept pressuring. We need that album. We need that album. So we jumped right back in without any rest, you know, without any, any time to uh, recuperate from the tour and started recording. And, uh, uh... How long did you spend making it? Oh, 12 days. Really? Yeah. You know, we, 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 took, we had a totally different approach this time. And we used a different studio, too. Where'd you go? Uh, a play... Well, this is kind of funny. It's, it's, act, it's now called Warner Brothers Recording Studios but it used to be called Amigo. Amigo? And every, everyone still calls it Amigo. Uh-huh. You know, but when you call information and you ask for uh, Amigo Studios, uh, they go, I'm sorry, no lifting, you know. Uh, it's, you know, it's owned by Warner Brothers. They had a real big room. It was just nice to have a change. Yeah. You know, because we've done every album at Sunset Sound. And uh, it was just a lot of fun going to a different studio. Uh, uh -huh. Getting back to what I meant about different approach on recording is uh, the reason it went quicker, you know, because I guess Fair Warning took longer than any album I've ever done. Uh -huh. Just because, uh, you know, I did more overdubs and, uh, I don't know, it just took more time. There were more things uh, on tape that had to be mixed, you know. Yeah. I did so many different guitar parts and stuff that uh, the mixing took longer and this and that. But, um, I mean, this album is that was actually cheaper to make than our first one. It cost us like 40, 46 grand. Really? Yeah. This, and the reason why, getting back to it once again, is the different approach was we, instead of going into the studio, Oh, wait, let me, let me start at the beginning. What we always do is go down into the basement and uh, work up our, our new ideas and stuff. And then Ted comes down and listens and picks the ones that he likes and the ones he doesn't like. Um, so we're, we're already prepared before we go in the studio. You know, whereas a lot of bands will go straight in the studio and actually try and write yeah. at, at 150, 200 bucks an hour. You know, which is bullshit. Yeah. Um, so uh, we all kind of agree on the songs that we want to do. And then uh, we, instead of going into the studio and doing 10 basic tracks, we would do one basic track, come back the next day, or the same day later on in the evening after dinner, and do the backup harmonies and the lead vocal. Uh-huh. And then that one was gone, you know? That's that, great. That one was in the bag. And then we'd record the next basic track and sing and do leads and whatever. So we took each song, uh, you know, one at a time as opposed to doing 10 songs all at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, that way, you know, it was, I could concentrate more on each song. As opposed to, well, what we always normally do is I, uh, we, we would get a basic track, uh -huh. and we'd go and listen to it and go, hey, yeah, that's great, okay, let's do the next one. Instead of doing another song, we would finish that song completely before we started on the next one. Ah. You know? Yeah. What was the kind of the order of songs? Which ones did you knock out first? Oh, uh, well, the very first one was Pretty Woman. Yeah. That was yeah. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. That was a relatively uh, straight cover. Weren't you tempted to cut loose? Well, it's it's uh, it's it's actually one of the I think that and Dance the Night Away are the only two songs ever recorded by us that has no guitar solo. Yeah. And uh, hey, well, shit, you know, 
it almost makes me feel bad. It shows you how much uh, guitar solos mean to people, because that's, that's, Pretty Woman is actually our only legitimate hit, you know? It got to number 11 or 10 or something like that in Billboard. Uh-huh. But, uh, it's, uh, it's, I, I don't know, it, it was straightforward, but, like, the way, the way I played, I mean, let me grab it. I got to Hold on one second. Sure. Hey, Barney! Bring me a pad! Like, uh, I mean, a song like that that has a riff, you know, is, is this a 12 string acoustic? Because it sounds like shit, but. <laughs> Drop the phone. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, I still think that. Just like you really got me was straightforward, the same, you know. Yeah. But it was like uh, updated. I mean, actually, people didn't even know that it was an old song until uh, critics started saying, "Oh, here's Van Halen doing cover tunes again." Yeah. You know. Yeah. And the, and the, they're 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 good fucking songs. Oh yeah. Why should they not be done? redone, you know, like the way we do them for the new generation of people. Yeah. Really? You know, and, and it shows like, the... Uh, you know, the opening riff that... Uh, you know, it just... I, I think it is different than the original. Oh, for sure. Except, you know, that riff, you can't... It, that's the main reason I wanted to do it. That ding, 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 ding. You know, it smokes. I love it. It's a classic. Yeah. What song did you do next? Mm, let me see. Got it. Uh, okay, well, let, let me let me start from the end. Okay. And work my way back. Oh, oh yeah, I remember the next thing we did. Um, we Have you seen our video? No. Of Pretty Woman? Uh-uh. Oh, God. You missed the best video of your life. <laughs> no, you'll have to see it sometime. Okay. Um, it's, uh, okay, you know, uh, Intruder, right before Pretty Woman? Yeah. The, you know, all the weird noise shit that I do? Yeah, it sounds the, like. The, the only reason we did that is because we did a video for Pretty Woman, and we had a transvestite uh, tied up and two midgets, like, uh, you know, harassing her, you know, squeezing her ass and doing this and that. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Dave was Napoleon. Mike was a samurai warrior. Alex, my brother, was a uh, uh, was Tarzan. And I was like a, gun, a gunslinger, you uh -huh. know, wearing leather pants and throwing on the gun and stuff. And uh, the I guess the plot was that... Um, no, I mean, and a hunchback was in it. He was up in like a bell tower looking down at the two midgets harassing this supposedly pretty woman. And uh, he would hop on the phone and call all, each one of us. And I'd hop on a horse and, uh, you know, come to the rescue and so what Al and uh, Dave and Mike. And uh, at the very end, she, she, Dave pulls up in a limo you know, he's always the one that's got the, you know, the, the, the classy, uh, crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so he pulls up in a white stretch limo and looks at her, and she starts running towards him like uh, he's her hero, and she pulls her wig off, and you see that she's a dude. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and, and okay, and the, the reason we did Intruder was because the... the the video was longer than Pretty Woman. Oh, I see. So we just so we just went right back in and said, "Hey, we need some more, we need some more music." It sounded like a jam or something. Huh? It almost sounded like a jam. Oh, all, all I'm doing is hey, I used a beer can, uh, all kinds of weird stuff, just making noise. You used and it was first take. It took it took a minute and forty seconds to do. How'd you make all the sounds? Oh, just uh, you know. Feedback, just uh, no overdubs, nothing. Just well, I mean, how do you use with the beer can? Huh? What do you use a beer can for? In the beer, okay. Well, in the very beginning, uh, I 
I twirled my vibrato bar, and it kind of sounds like a chain. Yeah. You know, like that. Uh-huh. Uh, then the, ne the next thing you hear is kind of like... Oh, a cricket sound. Well, it's, it, I, I don't know how to explain the sound, but... It almost sounds like crickets or something. Was that with a can of beer? A can of split small. What are you, are you just rubbing it on the strings? Yeah, just on the low E, like... <laughs> No, the, the, I think the cricket sound you're talking about was more uh, this, this, uh, you know, with a vibrato bar. And you're picking above the nut. Yeah, above the nut and and uh, the, the vibrato bar, like all the way down. And I, you know, rub the springs on the back. So what's the, you know, there's a sound in there that sounds like an elephant, sort of. Oh, 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 oh. You mean uh, the... Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that, that, was, that was so funny. I, I just took my pick and uh, right... Oh, God damn, it's so hard to explain. Okay, my guitar is one pick up, uh -huh. you know, and I would take the pick and right where the neck ends, you know, where it joins the body, yeah. where it ends, I would just take it, scrape it up, you know, and and the string when I, I I would scrape the pick up to the pickup, and the string would be hitting the the pole the magnet you know the pole of the, yeah. uh, the pickup, and it would just go. <laughs> so I just kept going. <laughs> 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 Sounds great. Oh yeah, I, hey, I just it, it was so much fun. I know there's a real sense of humor on the album. Hey, it, it, it's listen all our albums. I think they all have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it seems like your playing's uh, farther out than, than it's been, in some cases. Farther out? It's moving farther out, sort of, yeah. Well, in a good or bad way. Good. Oh. It's more innovative. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, God, I, I don't know how to explain the way I play. I just, um... Who's, whose uh, idea was it to do Big Bad Bill? Oh, that was, uh, Dave bought himself one of those Sanyo Walkman things. Uh-huh. Um, you know, with FM radio, it's, it's not a, a Sony. It's one of those jobs that has an FM, AM radio, and you, rec you can record off the radio if you like something you hear. And, uh, he was at his father's house, up in the bedroom, and all of a sudden he, re he picked, oh, this, this is funny, because it's, it was picked up from the city that we're in, from Louisville, Louisville Kentucky. Uh -huh. um, in a certain spot in his room, if he pointed the ant ant antenna a certain way, he picked up this, this fucking weird, like, uh, I don't know, what would you call that kind of music? Oh, uh, it's like big band, uh, early 30s yeah, big but band. Yeah, but just acoustic guitar, clarinet. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, straight you know, it's like a little bit shit. before swing music. Yeah, I, I guess whatever. But um, uh, he, he he just he picked it up and recorded it and he played it to us, and we just started laughing ourselves. So I'm going, that is bad. Let's let's do it. How'd and, you get uh, your pop on the gig? Huh? How'd you get your father on? Oh, well, you know, uh, it was actually Dave's suggestion. Uh -huh. He said, shit, hey, listen to this, man. You want to get your old man to play? I said, sure. <laughs> it was so funny because uh, I tell you, I couldn't play the song for you right now. I had to read. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. I had the burp. <laughs> um, you know, there's so many chords. Ding, 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 you know, stuff like that. Yeah. That I, I, I don't know. I just couldn't remember it. So here's... Here's my father sitting to the left of me with, you know, sitting on a chair with the music stand and sheet music in front of him. I'm sitting next to him on a chair with sheet music and a stand and Mike too. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, and he was playing like an acoustic bass. Wow. Uh, I don't know, it's kind of weird. It's just like an acoustic guitar. You know, you know, like when you go to a Mexican restaurant. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they come up and uh, play in front of your face and... Uh, 
aggravate the shit out of you. <laughs> you know, the, bass, the kind of bass guitars they play? Yeah, right. Yeah, he played one of those. And, uh, I don't know, it was funny as shit. We had a great time. It looked like an old uh, 30s or 40s session. What kind of guitar did you use? I, oh, I used some thick uh, Gibson hollow body. Did it have the F holes? Yeah. All right. How'd your father feel about playing on your album? Huh? How'd your father feel about playing on the album? Uh, okay, let me explain this. He hasn't played his clarinet in 10 years. Uh huh. Because he, he lost he lost his left hand middle finger uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, he tried to lift up a trailer and it fell on his finger and just chopped his finger off. Uh huh. So, uh, you know, he, he's been playing a little bit, but not. I mean, he was nervous as shit. And we're just all, hey, just fucking have a good time. And we, we make mistakes, you know, that's what makes it real. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I, I love what he did. Oh, me too. But it's just that he's thinking back 10 years ago, you know, when he was smoking, playing jazz and stuff, you know, and he, he just can't do it anymore because he's wearing dentures, you know, and whenever you're playing a, a wind instrument, you got to keep the muscle tone of your lips in shape. Yeah. And, uh, you know, your teeth have a lot to do with it, too. And when you're wearing dentures and missing a finger, uh, it's like we almost have to force them to do it. Uh-huh. You know? But, uh, fuck, I, think, I mean, it's exactly what we wanted. It's probably reached the biggest audience he's ever reached, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, I love it. I think it's great. Has he ever played on stage with you? No. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. I asked him if he would when we played L.A., and he said, no way. No? No. What's your favorite cut on the record? Um, Secrets. Yeah? Cathedral and Secrets. How come Secrets? Uh, I don't know. To, to me, that... Well, okay, wait. Let me, let me re-answer that. I like... I like everything on it. Uh-huh. You know? I like certain parts, like, say... Uh, or, or I like each song in a different way. Sure, I understand that. You know, like I, I like Big Bad Bill because it, it has a different side, different sense of humor. Uh, just like I even fucking like uh, Happy Trails, as ridiculous as it sounds. That's damn funny. I've been singing it to my old lady. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're even doing it in the show, man, and people go nuts for it. Yeah? You know? Do you do it at the very end? Huh? You do it at the end? Yeah, we do it right. We do. We, we end with... Our, our second encore is You Really Got Me, and right after the guitar solo in the middle, we stop and uh, get Alex down front, and we, we sing it, and then <laughs> launch back into You Really Got Me and finish the song. Yeah. But, um, you know, yeah, I, I guess I like Secrets. The reason I said I like Secrets my, as my favorite um, and Cathedral is because, uh, I mean, Cathedral, I've been doing for, you know, over, over a year. And I wanted to put it on record. And, uh, okay, what I'm about to tell you, don't print. Okay. Please. Okay, you got it, Eddie. It's just that uh, Dave said, no more fucking guitar solos. You know. He's crazy. No, I mean, you know, he's, he's, got, he's on an ego trip. He's always been... Whatever, and if you print this, I want to fucking come up to your house and blow your ass away. <laughs> no, but it's true. I, I've never printed anything you didn't want me to before. Yeah, I know. But, uh, you know, he just said, fuck this, man, no more guitar solos. And, uh, you know, Ted didn't know that that's the way Dave felt. And uh, so one day when Dave wasn't there, I said, Ted, what do you think of this? And what do you think of that? You know, I played him uh, little guitars, the intro, you know, the little uh, flamenco sounding thing. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and Cathedral, and he's going, I'm like, God, why the fuck didn't you show me this earlier? And I explained to him, well, Dave just said, you know, uh, fuck the guitar hero shit, you know, we're a band. And uh, so Ted just said, you know, fuck Dave. So we put it on anyway. What's the um, effects in Cathedral? Say that again? You're using a volume swell in Cathedral at the beginning? No, I'm using uh, a, 
I'm using like a 61 Stratocaster with a vol just a volume knob, and I'm cr I'm turning it like this. You know. Up on, and down. On 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 off on off on off on. Yeah, and I'm using an uh, an echo and a uh, a chorus. What gave it the violin-like effect? Oh, just fuck, I don't know. It's just the. Uh, oh, I don't know how to explain it. It's just uh, see the way. The, okay, it's the same type of echo setting that I use on the mini moog for dancing in the streets. Uh huh. Because all I'm really doing in dancing in the streets is it, on the keyboard is. I keep dropping the phone. All I'm really doing is. Huh? You know, like that. Uh -huh. But the, I set the echo in a way where it sounds like a sequencer. Oh. I see. That sounds almost like a Catholic church organ or something. Yeah. That's what, you mean uh, uh. cathedral? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I call the cathedral. I remember hearing music like that when I was a kid. Huh? I remember hearing that like when I was a kid. Uh-huh. That's amazing. But, uh, you know, that's all it is. I'm just going... Oh, God, it, you know, it's hard to explain it over the phone. But uh, I, I'm using a volume knob, and all I'm playing is this. But except with a volume. Uh-huh. You know, just a knob. And, uh, and uh, you know, what's funny is the thing, uh, a volume knob, if you turn it too much, too fast, the thing heats up and freezes up. Uh-huh. And I did, like, two takes of it. And right at the end of the second take, the volume knob just froze. Ooh. It just stuck, you know, it just stopped. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, I guess it's, I gotta say that, you know, the way I play, I don't, I don't claim to be, you know, Joe Betcher or nothing, but I, I think the best thing that I do is cheat. Well, I mean, I, 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 we, we need, we needed, what I like to do on records is have things in between songs. Oh, yeah. Little segues, little whatever, to keep your interest as opposed to one song, next song, next song, you know. For sure. It over. You know, like, say, Cathedral or Intruder or uh, little guitars intro, you know, stuff like that. I love, you know, making the album flow from beginning to end. Yeah. Where you can listen to it from beginning to end without being bored. And um, I, I came up with little guitars intro, the Spanish sounding thing, and I bought a couple of uh, Montoya records, and I'm here, you know, and I'm hearing this guy going <laughs> finger picking. I'm going like, God, this motherfucker is great. Uh -huh. I, I can't do that. So what I did is I just kind of listened to it, to that style of playing for a couple of days, and, and I cheated. What you I what? did, you know, Steve Lukather, you know, guy from Toto. Yeah. He, he he was in the studio when we were mastering it, you know, cutting the desk, and he's going, "How the fuck did you do that? You overdubbed that, huh?" And I'm going, "No, I didn't. Here, here's how I did it." Wait, what I'm doing is trilling on the high E. With your uh, index and just middle? slapping my, my middle finger on the low E. Uh-huh. You know, and then when I hit the C, I go to... Or, uh, you know, I just think it's funny. Uh, I... If there's something that I that I want to do, I won't give up until I can e figure out some way to make it sound similar to what I c really can't do. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yeah, are you playing two parts at once there or three? What? When you, in that song, are you playing two or three parts at once? It's, what, what do you mean? In that little guitar's intro. You mean the Spanish thing? Yeah, right. That's just one guitar. No, no. 
Are you playing? A, it's like you're playing two, two or three separate parts. Uh, I'm doing the trill. I'm doing the trill and pull offs with my left hand. Uh huh. You know, if I had a different guitar here, here's what I'm doing with my left hand. Drop the phone. <laughs> with the right hand is this. I got it. Where did you compose that? At home. What, anywhere? At well, home. just listen to Montoya, huh? Well, I, I, you know, I, I just listened to it a little bit, and, you know, actually, I mean, the guy's good, but everything, every fucking song he did was like... You know? Sounds like, yeah, real dramatic. Well, yeah, but it was all the same stupid chords, you know? Yeah. In the, in the other part of Little Guitars? Huh? In the other part of Little Guitars? It, but I, I don't understand what you mean. Uh, when you did the electric part of Little Guitars? Oh, yeah. What, what effect did you use in the beginning? It really sort of uh, just... Okay, the, I used a... A miniature Les Paul that I custom made by a guy named Dave Petulat. Oh, at the Pick and Parlor? Huh? At the Pick and Parlor in Nashville? No, he's, I, he, he just works on his own, I think. Is he out of Tennessee? Yeah, yeah. He was just at the show tonight, too. Oh, really? But I don't think he works. Uh, he just works out of his uh, garage or whatever. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Is that what you used on the cut? Uh huh. On the it's, record? It's a, the whole song is a miniature. Uh, you know the, the the guitar Billy Gibbons plays. Yeah, like the Chiquita. The Chiquita, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, this I I actually had this guitar over a year ago before the Chiquita ever came out. Uh huh. You know. And uh, last year on the bus, I came up with, uh, you know, little guitars, that you know, that song. And, um, well, the whole thing is played on that little guitar. And I'm wow. using a chorus, you know, a rolling uh, chorus echo job set on the chorus thing from the very beginning. Uh-huh. You know. What about in the guitar break? Uh, which part do you mean? Uh, near the end. In the very end? Yeah. Um, that was an, you mean the part that goes like this? Uh... Can you hear that? Yeah. That part, that was my, my regular, uh, old faithful red, uh, red striped garbage strat. Is that? Know. When I first met you, you were playing a black and white strat. That's the same guitar that I'm still using now. I you repainted it. I see. It's yeah. the same, the same guts. Everything's the same. Is the pickup still stuck in there with matchbook covers? The same pickup. <laughs> it just screwed right into the wood. <laughs> Too I'll much. I'll tell you, it's, to me, man, it, it works. It sounds better to me when that pickup is mounted screwed directly into the wood as opposed to suspended by springs. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Might, I might be crazy, but uh, that, that guitar sounds better than fucking anything else I've ever bought or built or owned. Yeah. Um, the full bug? Uh-huh. Does Dave play an acoustic guitar and yeah, harmonica? Yeah, he, he plays the intro. And the harp, too? Yeah. Yeah, your lines in that song are, are, are uh, more sophisticated than they sound more worked out, almost fusion-y. You mean in the metal? Or yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I've, uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff. Like, uh, uh, you know Alan Holdsworth? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I jammed with him at the, at the Roxy. I heard about that. Oh, yeah, it was fucking great. I, can't, I, I, I kind of wrote a tune and came down in the afternoon and got them to play it, you know, because they, they asked me if I wanted to jam with them. And I said, well, shit, I can't play the kind of you know, offbeat stuff you guys do. 
also, uh, how about playing this? You know, one of the riffs that, uh, I don't know, it kind of went, uh, you know, something that was their style, but more my influence type of thing. And, uh, hey, Alan is such a fucking nice guy. He, uh, you know, he spent the night at my house and we started talking, man, and he fucking, he, he, He's got two kids and a wife back in England, and he's selling equipment to fucking pay the rent. Aww. And he came over here for his last chance at trying to make some money playing. So some groupie cunt chick whose father is rich flew him and his band out here and, you know, got him some gigs, like at the Roxy and... Uh, Golden Bear or whatever in the, you know, places like that. Man, I started crying. I couldn't fucking believe it. So uh, after I jammed with him at the Rocks, I'm saying, my God, man, you're too fucking good to just be, you know, pissed away like this. He was selling records at the door. You're kidding. Yeah, he's not even on a label. So I, I fucking called Ted, our producer, and I said, God damn it, check this guy out. He is hot, you know? He might be a little out there, you know? Uh-huh. He might be a little spaced out, but uh, anyway, I got him signed to Warner Brothers. Great. You know? Good for you, man. I mean, I, I, just, I just had to help him, man, because he's the only motherfucker that I, I get off on. I mean, you're the first person I ever heard talk about him. Well, you know, that shows you how much I like him. Yeah. I love the way he plays. You know, no, I, I think nobody ever even knew who he was until I started talking about him. Yeah. What, what appeals to you about his playing? Pardon? What appeals to you most about his playing? Ah, just his... I don't know how to explain it. He's, he's got feeling... He, he's got a fucking ear that's unbelievable. I mean, you could play any chord change you want, and he can improvise over it. But at times, I got to say, he does get a little monotonous, you know, with his son. Uh, you know, the, you know, he never stops. Yeah. You know, and I talked to him a little bit about that too, because um, I'm 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 going to be co-producing his album. Uh huh. You know, which is going to be a lot of fun. Okay? Wow. Hey, Alan is such a fucking nice guy. It's unbelievable. And uh, he's just being fucked around. He's yeah. been fucked around by EG Records or something like that. And somebody owned his publishing and this and that. And uh, I just took him to our attorney and I said, listen to, listen to our attorney, you know. And um, so I think his deal's just about wrapped up with Warner Brothers. Great. Uh, I spoke to him, I guess, about two weeks ago, and he says, you know, he's fucking happy as shit. And, uh... You did him a good turn, Eddie. Hey, fuck, man. I, I... I'm not... You know, uh, just... Don't print everything that I'm telling you, okay? Yeah, for sure. You know, but that is one thing that bothered me so much in the very beginning, or in 78, our first tour, is how people like Joe Perry and other guitarists would just give me, you know, like, the shaft with their eyes. Yeah. You know, wouldn't say hello, wouldn't be nice, no nothing. I'm not that way. I don't give a fuck, you know, if I'm playing a holiday in lounge. I enjoy playing. But I can't stand to see a person with Alan's talent uh, because of mismanagement and people fucking him around. Uh, uh, you know, he, he was ready to sell his guitar and everything and work in a factory, you know? Wow. And that is fucking sickening. It is. So, I mean, you know, I just... Think of, you know, people like Joe Perry or Richie Blackmore, who all hate my guts anyway, that um, they wouldn't go out of their way to help anybody because they would feel threatened. Yeah. You know, hey, 
the way I look at it is I wish there were more people, you know, that were innovative. So I would have somebody to cop lick from. Yeah. I mean, it might sound a little egoed out, but there are very few guitarists that I can listen to that, that make me turn my head and go, whoa, how did he do that? And Alan is about the only one. Yeah. You know? Very sophisticated cat. Yeah. But also very naive and... Yeah. You've been through it now. Yeah. Yeah. And we're still going through it. Did you know Randy Rhodes? Yeah. God damn. Fucking poor guy. What'd you think of that kid? Well, he was one guitarist who was honest anyway. Because I read some interviews that he did, and he said that everything he did, he learned from me. Uh-huh. You know? And he, he was good. Yeah. And, uh, God damn it, mean, what a fucking way to go, you know? I mean, obviously, the guy, they, they must have been fucked up, jerking around with the pot, you know, with the airplane. Yeah. But it wasn't an accident. It was an accident, but they were definitely fucked up when it happened. They had to have been. Yeah. You know, you don't fly that low and smash into a crew bus and then hit the house, you know. Yeah. They were jerking off. Yeah. You know, and that's just plain stupidity. You sure had... I fucking feel sorry for him. You know, I mean, hey, well, you never know, man. He might be up there jamming with Bonham and everyone else, you know, who kicked the bucket. Yeah. But, um... He, he was the first cat to come along uh, after you and sort of inspire the... Yeah. The sort of worshipping uh, guys out there. Oh, sure. But I don't really think he he did anything that I haven't done. Uh-huh. What do you think? Uh, he's a little... Di he's a little different, but I, I hear a lot of you and him. The first time I ever heard him, I thought it was a guy copying you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean... Just like, well, and anyone else who does the things that I do, it obviously is going to sound a little different. Yeah. But it's still, it's, you know, I can tell when someone's copping my technique. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I fucking learned from other people, too. Yeah, it's just something that people hear and they like and they want. Sure, there ain't nothing wrong with it, man. I've, I've copied you know, other people's licks, you know. Yeah. Well, I got a few more song questions here. Sure. For Secrets was more, your chord progression was more up tempo than usual. Did you, um, did you flat pick that or finger pick it? I don't uh, 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 speak to your old language. Did you use a pick or your fingers? Oh, a pick. A pick? For Secrets, yeah. I used uh, a double neck, uh, 12 string and 6 string on the bottom. Oh, really? Yeah. What, what kind? Uh, Gibson. You know, the Jimmy Page model. Yeah. Except that's not what I'm using anymore because when we went on tour, you know, everyone was just saying, hey, you look like, just, just like Jimmy Page. So, you know, also, I'm, I'm uh, you know, Floyd Rose? Yeah, I know Floyd. Yeah. Okay, him and I are both, like, uh, endorsing and, and working with Kramer guitars. And, um... You know, we, we got this vibrato thing with a fine tune thing in it. So you don't have to unclamp the nut to tune the guitar. Oh, right. And it's, you know, they're going to call it Eddie Van Halen, uh, whatever, tremolo unit. And, you know, Floyd and I are working together with Kramer. And they built me a double neck, you know, that's great. It's, it, I used it tonight for the first time. Uh -huh. It really sounded good. Boy, uh, you're really picking up the guitars, huh? Could you say that again? You're really picking up the guitars. What do you mean? You're getting a lot of guitars. Yeah, well, shit. Yes, well. I love playing. I love ripping them apart and, uh, you know, fucking them up. <laughs> do you still use the, um, your, your uh, first one on stage a lot? My original black and white one? Yeah. That's my main axe. Yeah. That is, that is the only guitar that I use to record, except for like Cathedral, I use the regular Stratocaster uh -huh. to get a little more, you know, whatever nasal type of sound or whatever. 
Did you say you played a synthesizer and dancing on the street? Yeah, at the very beginning. The da 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 I, I, cause I, I did the solo, the secrets, and dancing in the street the same, you know, right, right after each other. Uh huh. And uh, I think I know secrets was first take. Yeah, you kind of laid back in there and it sounded great. Well, it was, you know, it, it fit the song. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, you know, just feedback from some people that go, hey, there weren't enough guitar solos. But you know, what people don't realize is that. A song like Secrets doesn't, uh, it doesn't call for a fucking, uh, a craziness solo. Yeah, you know, you're right. You have to do a solo that fits the song. What about Hang em High, the solo there? Oh, uh, that, that was, that was crazy. <laughs> a lot of, you know, it was just loose, fun craziness, you know. I mean, I, I play it better every night live than I did on a record, but who gives a fuck? It has feeling. That had kind of a chord melody in it. Oh, uh, what do you mean? A melody played with chords? Well, yeah, kind of. Kind of that'd be... Did you, did you write the bass part? And the verse part goes...
synthesizer? No, that was a guitar. Wow, that sounds hip. That Do was you? last night, I, you know. Oh, no, actually the night before. Have you been messing with guitar synthesizers? No, I, I, I don't like them. No? Well, I mean, I, I can play keyboards, and, uh... Yeah. You know, I, it seems like, uh... It's keyboard technology still. It's keyboard technology applied to a fucking guitar, and you have to play their guitar. You know, it just seems like, why not just goddamn play a keyboard? Yeah, really. Here we go, here's the synthesizer thing. Yeah, I hear it good. Huh? I can hear it well. Huh? I hear it good. Oh, That's about the only effect that I ever really used. I probably did. Yeah. It sounded like your solos had were more sounds and lines. That was good. Yeah, yeah. But uh, in one part you had real high squeaks. In uh, the solo of uh, yeah. Good Times? 
Was that string noises? Yeah, all I'm doing is taking a pick and, you know, taking it all the way up and down the neck going, you know, just going like this. Like that. Yeah. Are you, are you touring as much as you used to? Am I what? Touring? Uh, well, I didn't think we were going to, but, uh, you know, the states are going to be, you know, we started, oh, God, when, when did we start? Uh... July 9th, I think we left, and, uh, you know, we, uh, we'll be back August, late August, for this leg, and then we'll take a, a week or so off, and then go back out again for, uh -huh. for another six weeks, and then go back out again up until uh, early December and take the holidays off, and then I think in January we're going to Europe, and then we're going to Japan, Australia, and maybe South America. When are you going to catch your next album? Um, actually, I'd like to fucking take some time off. But uh, I'm building a studio at home. Uh-huh. Uh, just 16 track. You still living in L.A.? Yeah. Well, Studio City. Uh-huh. You know, it, it is L.A. Yeah. But uh, Don Landy, our engineer. Oh, another thing that I don't know. Can't, you can't print this, but have you heard Valley Girls by... Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, Moon, see, Moon Zappa sang it. Uh-huh. And uh, I met Frank Zappa right before he left for a European tour, and he asked me, he's got a 12-year-old kid and plays guitar, and he asked me, he called me up from Europe and asked me if I wanted to produce a single for him. You know, for his kid. Uh huh. So Moon sang on it, and uh, Dweezil is the kid's name. Played yeah. guitar, and Don Lanny and I produced it, and it cooks. It's small. It's called My, My Mother Is a Space Cadet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the flip side is called Crunchy Water, which is a real sicko song. Crunchy you know, the, Water. The true Zappa tradition, but uh, it, it it's funny because oh. The guitar parts really sound like me, like I played it. But the only thing that I did play on Space Cadet was the intro. Is that the first thing you've done outside the band since Nicolette? Oh yeah, it's the only. I mean, you know, this was a production thing. I spent uh, spent about a month doing it. Too much. Because oh, well, they, they could. Hey, the whole band was fucking twelve years old. That must be fun. They couldn't play for shit. <laughs> you know, Weasel. But, but when you hear it, it'll blow you away, you, you know. It, I mean, man, his, his guitar solo was a, com was a composite of about nine different takes after we uh, uh, sifted out the other 80 takes. Shit. I mean, it took like three days of of uh, five hours a day trying to get him to get a solo together. Yeah. Too much. Hey, I see you've been making National Enquirer. Oh, fuck. Well, that was depressing, man. Oh, I man, it was a crock of shit. I saw that in the grocery store and I went, oh, my God. You're talking about just a while ago. Yeah, I saw it maybe about six weeks, two months, three months. Yeah, and I had a picture of the band and stuff and how... Uh, Your party and lifestyles. Yeah, God, what a bunch of bullshit, man. Uh, there, were, there, there were things in there like... Uh, um, Valerie and I were at a posh ho uh, Hollywood restaurant called Le Dome, uh, arguing and uh, raising our voices and uh, shouting obscenities at each other. We've never even been there. And the thing of it is, is so, you know, even if you had, big deal. Everyone does that. Yeah, but that makes it even more ridiculous, man. It sets the shit out of me. We've never even been there. You know? Yeah. They just brought, they just pay people off to say what they want to hear. Yeah. Well, I don't even see, see why they have to pay people off. They just can, they can just make it up for all, you know. Well, a lot of people say that's exactly what they do. Uh-huh. Well, you know, they get a lot of lawsuits against them, but I, I don't feel like, uh, you know, wasting my money on that garbage. For sure. You know, and take you fucking 10 years by the time it comes to court. Yeah. You got better things to do. Hey, uh, 
are you ever you ever come down to LA? Yeah. Uh, you gonna be there maybe late August or so? Yeah, probably. You, you got to check out the studio and building. It's great. Really? Yeah. It's uh, well, it, I'm having a whole building built, kind of. It's uh, it's like uh, 40 feet long, 18 feet wide, and 18 feet high. Wow. And so I can, so, you know, it's really high ceiling. So I can, so I can put different. It's really high roof, so I can put different ceilings in it. You know, for different sounds. For sure. And uh, I bought, you know, uh, you know, sixteen track. Uh, I don't know, fuck, goddamn! I forget what name it is. <laughs> but it, but it, everything I bought is exactly what we did our first album on. Uh huh. You know. Great. So. I mean, I'm going to be doing all kinds of weird stuff. That's great. I've, I've been jamming with different people. I've been, I've been jamming with, you, you know, Jeff Berlin? Sure, I know Jeff. Yeah. He, he played with me when I played with Alan Holdsworth on, at the Roxy. Berlin's working for us. He's writing a column. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I just spoke to him night before last. Yeah, I think he's going to, and Zap is writing one for us. Oh, really? Yeah. What, what about? I mean, what? Uh, playing, it's going to be like, shut up and play your guitar or something like that. But oh, it's just him talking about how he plays? Uh, you know, it's more like giving people advice on techniques and stuff. Right. I don't know, all we did was we sent a guy down to his house and he spent a day with him and he, he just uh, talked to him for a few hours and right. they, they sent him a transcription of the tape and he read it over and, and changed everything he wanted to and we're just going to print it in different parts. Right. Yeah. What, what, what do you think of Frank Swing? It's, it's, uh, it doesn't move me. It's, it's, it's a little too, uh... Too eccentric or something. It's too spasmatic, uh, uh, typewriter-ish. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to knock the guy, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm but, not either, but, uh... But he, he doesn't have, he doesn't have any, uh, I don't know. The guy who's playing I like now is, uh, Andy Summers. From the police. Oh yeah, well he but but he, but he does you know nothing but record stuff. Yeah. You know no I love it too. It's textural stuff you know. Yeah yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, after hearing a bunch of. Uh, but I I I don't know I guess it, it's so funny for me to sit and you know I guess criticize other guitar players because what I was just about to say is that Andy Summers you know sounds like all he uses is a a phaser and a flanger all the time and plays chords, which sound nice, but when you hear a whole album of that same sound, you know, it drives me into the wall. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm, I get the same sound through every fucking record, too. <laughs> I try to talk, you know? Yeah. Are you still recording with your marshals in the studio? The same thing I've always used. Yeah. Well, if you got something that works, don't mess with it. Yeah, but I mean, you know, what I just said, like about Andy Summers, maybe uh, other people are saying the same thing about me, you know, everything he does sounds the same, you know. Yeah. But what the hell, I'm having a good time, and he probably is too. That's all that counts, really. really. You made your mark. Who knows what will happen in the future. Yeah. I really want to get into keyboards. Really? Well, I, I mean, I started out playing piano. Uh-huh. You know, I get, uh, I've been writing, actually, fuck half the songs um, on Fair Warning I wrote on piano. Like, uh, Unchained, um, Hear About It Later, what else? I don't know, there were these two or three songs in it. Did you write any of Diver Down on keyboards? Um, let me think. No. Now you broke a world's record, huh? The first, what was it? Warner Brothers called and said, was the first time a band ever went platinum with their first five albums? Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think anyone's ever done that before. You're kidding. No, no, it's the world's record, if I'm not mistaken. You mean every, you mean every album going platinum? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Noel should know. Well, we've been going through shit with Warner Brothers because they fucked us royally. Really? Hey, well, uh, 
honored. Don't I won't say anything about this, but we were at 11. You know, we were like number three for like four weeks in Billboard. Then we went to number six, and then we went to number 11, and all of a sudden we jumped to 40. Wow. And our sales were more than when we were 11. Because we, they're just teaching us a lesson. You know, like, hey, don't tell us our business. Because we, we all, you know, we went there and, you know, had a meeting with Mo Austin, the chairman of the board, and told them, uh, you know, uh, we want to see a little more of this and that. Because, like, the video that we did, I don't know, there's so, uh, I could write a book about the things that go down. They never even wanted us to record Pretty Woman. They, they didn't want nothing to do with it. They didn't want nothing to do with our videos. So we forked out the bucks to do it all ourselves. And they, all they did was equal the money that we put out. You know, we got in, independent, independent promoters, promotion people to service the stations, play it. Uh -huh. And we just said, fuck this shit, you know? We're... You know, we're Austin, Rod Stewart, and Al Jarreau are about the only three people for Warner Bros. to go platinum. And they treat us like shit. So when we went from 11 to 40, man, we got pissed. You know, and now, you know, we're like... How can they do that, by giving out the wrong figures? Oh, they just, they're just not done with us. I'm telling you, man, they're just like, I don't know. I don't want to get into it because uh, I can do it. I I, I can tell you stories back from day one, and the, what it what the whole thing boils down to is that they nobody in the company can can claim that they had anything to do with our success, and that's why they don't like us. They like the money that we make for them, but nobody in that company, you know, nobody helps us. We came off tour in the first year after touring for 11 fucking months, and we came home owing Warner Brothers $240,000. You know? That's amazing. No, no support, no nothing. So we had to go out there and tour, you know? Which is nothing wrong with that. But, uh, you know, we, we, we were platinum three weeks ago with this album. Yeah. What the fuck are we doing out here? They already got their million albums, you know? Because that's all they expect out of us. Uh -huh. that's, that's what one of their executives told me when we first got signed. You know, you, you get, you know, Vanuals the type of band, they'll sell a million every time, you know, but that's about like the extent of your career. What's you know, wrong? they just, they, they just don't, uh, I don't know. They don't say anything when I'm telling you. I won't, for sure. I'm just, I'm, you know, ragging. <laughs> I can do it. You know, and, and that's funny too. It's what you just said. That, uh, you know, that's a, a, ra a world's. Ra hey, well, do they fucking. They don't treat us like we're anything special. Yeah. We sold a lot of goddamn records for that fucking company. Yeah, one of the most popular bands in America. Shit, you know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. any more questions? No. Hey, thanks a million, Ed. Sure, man. I still love your music. Thank you, man. I well, what, what do you think of our new album? I like it a lot. I really, the sense of humor in it appeals to me the most. I, I think the sense of humor and just, it's different. There's so many styles of music. Yeah, I just went know, right that, on. This is sophisticated. That, that's what I love about it, man. You know, like Secrets, to me, is like the first semi-mellow thing we've ever done. Uh-huh. You know? And that's why I like it so much. Yeah. It's still Van Halen. It's not like Journey purposely, you know, doing fucking tear-jerking uh, uh, pop tunes to make money. Oh, I don't even mention them guys to me. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know, I you know. know. They're fucking out for the box, period. Who's crying now? Yeah, you know, all, all we did hey, is we put on that record what we wanted on it. And, uh, fuck anybody who says that we did anything purposely. Yeah. You know. 
And that's the one thing that nobody understands about us, that we have a sense of humor. You know, I, I think other people take us more serious than we take ourselves. Yeah. And you can quote me on that. Because <laughs> it's true. You know, most reviewers and critics, man, they fucking take us so seriously that they don't really, they, they totally miss the, the sense of humor, that we don't even take ourselves as serious as they think we do. Yeah. How can you hear happy trails and not completely understand what's going on? I don't know. I think a lot of critics have their own problems working. Oh, yeah. That's why they're critics. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, thanks a million, Eddie. Good talking to you again. I got your home phone number now, so, uh, you know, when, when I get a week or two off at home, uh, I'll give you a call or uh, call a guitar player and find out where you are. Maybe you can drop by, you know? For sure. Okay. Hey, is Neil still touring with you? Yeah, he's, he's out with us till uh, Sunday, I think. Would you mind telling him that I could use a few prints from this tour for the article? Definitely. He's, uh, he's my main photographer for the magazine. Great. Okay, Eddie. Okay. Thanks. Hey, hey do me a favor. Sure. For, uh, write something in there that that I, I am endorsing Kramer products. Uh-huh. You know? Okay. Just because, I mean, so many people think that I endorse Charvel and everybody's using my name, but Kramer is actually the first and only company that I think is better than Gibson and Fender put together. Uh-huh. You know? And, uh... And their stuff is affordable. It's very cheap. Are they going to come out with an Eddie Van Halen model? No. Just, all, all I'm really endorsing is the tremolo unit. Uh huh. You know. But uh, hey, their their guitars are great. They really are. Great. I'll get that in there. Yeah, just throw it in there. You know. Are you still getting the mag? Well, you're on the road all the time, anyways. Am I still getting what? The magazine. I, I haven't gotten one. I don't know how long. Shoot, man, I can send you a stack if you want. Fuck, that'd be great. Especially the ones where you're mentioned. A lot of people talk about you. Oh, please. Okay. When do you think uh, this will be in? This will be in uh, probably uh, uh, November or December. Uh-huh. Well, send me some. Okay, where do you want me to send them to? Oh, uh, I guess just to our office. Okay, for sure. Okay. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Jazz. Have fun on your tour. Say, say hello to the rest of the gang at the magazine. I will. Okay? Okay. Bye. Bye.